system in place to keep us in chains by show of hands who else is sick and tired of the same yes percent trying to keep us small trying to keep us from getting out minimizing the struggles they've caused saying we're not working hard enough we really should stop this fighting. Otherwise, we'll miss the fireworks. There won't be any fireworks. And here we go. And welcome, everybody, to Suck It. I am the great and powerful King of Kings, Prince of all that is awesome, Derek. How are you this evening on this Friday, December 18th of the horrible year that has been 2020? I want to say that it is seven days away from Christmas. We are seven days out from Christmas. It is one week from today. Thank God. And then two weeks from today is New Year's Eve, and we are done. Or New Year's Day, and we are done. Just done with it. And hopefully the new year will bring smiles because I'm sick and tired of the sappiness that's all I got to say about that but anyway I hope you guys enjoyed your week I know we have here on the show um, everybody from comedian Steve Hofstetter to last night when Keith joined me for an impromptu session on the show due to a cancellation um, and all the other great bands we've had on this week thank you very much and to everyone again that participated in the Charity concert exactly one week ago today. Thank you very much for that. Um, we are up to $3,000 on our Toys for Tots charity campaign, so thank you very much for that. That's awesome. And we're continuing to kick ass from there. So let's just get right into tonight. My next guest is a band by the name of Chainflower. And this band is pretty freaking badass. Uh, three members... Sid, Kelly, and Rainin, um, and their music is just amazing. Um, I've been listening to them all week long, um, and on top of that, you know, they've played with some of the biggest bands out there individually, um, and it's just pretty cool to have them on. So let's just get right to it, because you know what? I want to have a conversation. I don't want to sit here and talk to a microphone without anybody talking to me, and I don't know, you guys want to hear me fucking flapping, so let's just go ahead and get to it. So without any further ado, please welcome the members of Chainflower, Kelly, Sid, and Rainin. Hey, how are you guys doing? Hi. Well, Rain is missing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's <laughs> He'll be here in a sec. So how are you guys doing? We're doing great. Just chilling here in LA. Weather nice? Pretty nice, yeah. yeah. We can't complain. If we say it's cold, all of like my Midwest friends and Becky's, they start yelling at me like, "You don't know what cold is." <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm looking at ten inches of snow outside. Oh my God. <laughs> uh, it's a beautiful sunset. Right now. <laughs> yeah, we got absolutely pummeled on Wednesday. Oh, um, really? Yeah, I mean New York. From what I understand, this this storm dumped on New York the exact same amount of snow in one day that they got all last season. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think it's pretty much the same thing here for the D.C. region because I'm in Northern Virginia. And I think it's because I don't remember this much snow last year at all. So it's hey. it's crazy. But I love it, so I'm happy with it. That's cool. Good. It's 30 degrees and snowing. It's just, you know, I can't complain. That's not bad. No, not at all. <laughs> not at all. You know, especially when you're a, you know, you're an at-home creator. You know, all you do is create stuff at home, and you know, so this is all I do is, you know, I'm just a creator. Yeah. Um, I don't have to drive. I don't have to go anywhere. Just sit on my computer all day and look out the window and go, oh, that's pretty, and then go back to work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I had to go out and check the mail today. That sucked. But other than that, I'm fine. Oh. <laughs> I definitely get seen in the mood for the holidays. Say again. It gets you in the mood for the holidays. It does. Um, now, looking at the weather going into the future, um, I don't think we're gonna have a white Christmas. So that kind of sucks. I wish it would would have waited a week, but hey, you know. Yeah, uh, yeah. it's a little, a little early. Yeah, it's gonna be in like in the 
the 30s and 40s the next week, so it might stick around. It might not. I mean, but who knows? But I've been here for five years. I have yet to have a white Christmas, so that kind of pisses me off. But oh well. So, um, this year obviously has been different. Let's just put it that way. Um, But at the same time, for creators like myself and creators like yourselves and all of the other you know, many, 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 many indie bands that I've talked to over the last two, three months, um, hell, last eight months, really, but I've been talking nothing but bands for the last two months. Um, it's been a blessing and a curse um, because it's given you guys an opportunity to really, you know, hone in and create some good stuff for you guys. I mean, and then the curse part is when you guys release it, you can't go out and tour it and get in front of your fans. Right. Yep. But at the same time, the blessing with it is the fact that, yeah, you can't go out and tour, and you, but you can release music. But when you release that music as a smaller you know, band or as an indie band or whatever you label you want to put on it, you're not competing with the Avenged Sevenfolds of the world. You're not competing with the Slipknots of the world. You're not competing with all these other artists that have decided to not put out new music this year because they want to tour with it. So you guys are only competing against other smaller indie artists which is fantastic because everybody promotes everybody in the indie scene. But once you get to that, yeah. you know, the major label scene, then they stop doing that. But, yeah. um, you know, on this side, it's, you know, the discoverability on Spotify and Amazon Music and Pandora is elevated. And because there's nobody else competing with you guys except for other indie artists. And I find that fascinating because it's given you guys a chance and all the other bands that I've talked to a chance to really shine this year in ways that might not have happened otherwise. Absolutely. It's sort of like a reset button Mm -hmm. that leveled the playing field for everybody. Exactly. You know, so it is like you said, a blessing and a curse. It's sort of strange that, you know, there is a silver lining to such a, you know, extreme traumatic year. So, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I I think somebody's at the door. Huh? Oh. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it's it's one of those weird things to where you can, you know, really take an opportunity to reinvent yourself this year. You know, there's lots of people that have been laid off, let go, furloughed, whatever the case might be, that are living off of unemployment or living off sure. of a severance oh, yeah. hey how's it going <laughs> what's up my man sorry you know this parking is a real kerfuffle it is. it's shit here but yeah. we always have to be here yeah. <laughs> we always have the nice apartment it, and it's central <laughs> yeah. you gotta stick with the nice apartment i you know i understand that yeah. but parking and, and traffic is shit everywhere in la so you can't really yeah. <laughs> life that's you life know, right? no escape so, yeah, I see. Yeah. That's why I live in the yeah. suburbs. It's it's like you were saying. It's a, you know, it's actually a great time for us to create. Yep. So yeah. to go back and just create music, create, you know, visuals, and that's what we've been doing. You know? Yeah, I mean, I watched that uh, that visuals, um, you know, video you guys put out two weeks ago, and I love that. That was pretty trippy. That was pretty awesome. Yeah. Um, the song and the song behind it was fantastic too. Um, but yeah, it's, you're hundred percent right. It's one of those things where you, you know, if you don't do it, you're never going to know whether or not it works, you know, especially with this year, you know, if you're unemployed and you're sitting around the house going, woe is me, you know, what am I going to do now? Then the only person putting that brick wall in front of you is yourself. And, okay. but you know, if you're sitting there saying to yourself, you know what, what did I want to do when I was 13 years old? You know, I think I want to go try that now. Or hell, you know, I've always been curious about woodworking. Let me get into woodworking. Let me try something. You know, instead of just, you know, catching up on, you know, reruns of Big Bang Theory that you missed over the years because you've been working too damn much, you know, pick up something and decide, hey, you know, I'm going to try this, you know, and why not? I mean, this is a perfect opportunity, you know. And millions are, right? I mean, millions of Americans are taking the opportunity to do just that, which is amazing. Exactly. Not just musicians, like you said. You know, everybody across every spectrum is sort of trying to reinvent themselves right now. Yeah, it's it's perfect. Yeah, because it's it's one of those times where it's it's essential. 
you know, whether it be, you know, for your mental health or just for your own, you know, well-being, you know, trying something new is important. Um, so what did you I mean? Other than that, obviously, what has you guys has been your know, major motivation this year, you know, to put out the music, to drive things like that? You know, what has been your other than the, what we just talked about, obviously, what has been your biggest driver? What has been your biggest motivation? I mean, we always had planned to release as many uh, singles and videos as we could this year, mm-hmm. um, yeah. especially with, you know, Sid, these releases this year are her first. Yeah. And so that was My really, that was, <laughs> yeah, with us, with Chain Power, of course. So that was a really exciting thing for us just to get releases out that, you know, she's leading, you know. Yeah, like strangely enough, other than, you know, those shows, which we love playing live shows, so I'm sure we would have just booked shows as they come to us, as opportunity comes. But for our big plan and our, like our main goals, nothing really slowed us down because we knew we had to take a breath and create new music together and put it out, you know? And a lot comes with that, like all the details of like just doing photo shoots for it or lyric videos or just, you know, all the things that go along with uh, being an independent band. So it didn't really feel like, oh no, what are we gonna do now? It was like, okay, are you ready to meet next week? Or if we couldn't meet, we would do like Zoom stuff, you know, Mm -hmm. just email like like everybody else has to do. So um, yeah, it just felt kind of like like you said, it kind of gave you an opportunity to get these things done. So, and when the lockdown came, we were wondering, oh, you know, should we wait? Yeah. And because nobody knew how long it was going to be, yeah. you know, like in, in March when it happened. I remember being had... like, oh, <laughs> summertime's coming along. By June, this will all be wrapped <laughs> up. We'll be playing <laughs> shows again. Summer yep. fest. <laughs> It's going to be fine. Like, oh, June comes around. You know what? September. Surely yeah. September, and it'll all be wrapped up. It's like cut to December, highest numbers yeah. there's ever been. It's like, yes. yep. I so mean, we pushed through. We just said, you know, fuck it. We're just going to keep releasing stuff. It's not going to slow us down. It may have a little, but we had a release set like just a month right after that already scheduled. And so yeah. we, we went with it. You know, we just put it out and then we did the next step and then we did the next step and no better time to release stuff than now because everybody's sitting on their ass doing nothing anyway so exactly everybody yeah. you know, at least has, has some time to check out your music you know you can't yeah. like oh what you're too busy yeah yeah, yeah and i had so, said that before you you know before you so eloquently were you know late joining the party Raynan. Uh, <laughs> no um hey, you know what um i'm a drummer i have to be early fucking everything okay i'm always the first one to show up get the kit all that stuff god forbid i'm late to a damn interview. <laughs> that you know that is a factual thing i mean you got the hardest part you know that kid is you know, a pain in the ass of all things too you know yeah, um yeah. but no, hey, i was know, saying I interrupt you and cut you off real quick mm-hmm. uh because we didn't really formally introduce each other um but i wanted to ask you about where suck it podcast come from are you a degeneration x fan is that where or is this just, uh, is this just beyond that because any is- chance I get to talk wrestling. If I hear suck it, I'm like, oh, that's a rest- wrestling term. Oh, okay, well, first of all, um, I'll, I'll go ahead and say this. It is not a Degeneration X thing. Um, okay. However, yeah, you, no, if you want to talk, <laughs> if you want to talk wrestling, um, I used to be a pro wrestler for 13 years. Oh, awesome! Oh, well, then even better. Kelly. I know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, um, I was a pro wrestler for 13 years, and I um, I broke my neck in 2013 in a car accident. And had to retire. Oh, man. Um, and I became a stand-up comedian after that, so that's kind of fun. Um, but no, the um, the suck it actually comes from this. So I'm bipolar, and I have extreme anxiety and PTSD, and I've suffered multiple suicide attempts. And growing up in the '90s as a kid, um, as a boy, one of the things that I was always told was "suck it up." Girls can only be you know depressed. You know, boys can't be depressed. It's a girls' thing. Don't worry about it. You'll be fine. Suck it up. Well, my response to them was always suck it because you don't know what I'm going through. So the whole idea is for anyone who ever for anyone who's ever told you to suck it up in life, you tell them to suck it. And that's the idea behind the show. Well, that's we, awesome. We love, love it. it. Yeah, we love that backstory. That's amazing. Yep. Um, we are all for supporting whatever anybody is going through, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mental health is probably the most overlooked problem 
and, and, and you know the world realistically so i love that you have the better help thing going on you know what i mean that's that's Absolutely. that's awesome all, all supportive of it for sure oh yeah i mean i work with nothing but um mental health sponsors i just locked in another one yesterday um yeah. it's, all, it's all mental health stuff and stuff that is going to keep you entertained i don't push things that aren't going to be anything that's other than that but i mean the whole idea behind my show is you know I only talk. I talk to everybody. I talk to you know bands primarily, but actors, directors, blah 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 blah. But I have a rule on my show: is if your PR rep contacts me to be on my show, you do not give me a no-no list because I want to have a raw and real, honest conversation. Because that's the idea behind my show. I don't want to. I don't want you to come on the show and just talk. Oh, here's my new late. Here's my new album, yeah. and this is the new single. Okay, thanks. Fifteen minutes later, gone. No, that's and not what I. That's not way I do my show. Yeah, you got to turn around a bunch of bullshit. Right? Yeah, exactly. Let's cut through the bullshit. Let's let's talk about the new album. Let's talk about everything else. But then at the same time, let's talk real world stuff and get to know the real person behind the album, the real person behind the guitar, behind the mic, behind the camera. Therefore, the fans fall in love with you even more. That's the whole idea behind my show. Um, that's a, that's actually your asset. Your humanity mm -hmm. is a fucking asset, and you should put it out there. Yep. Use a fuck. Exactly. Um, I, I have, was once told by a PR person that um, never talk about politics or um, or uh, social yeah. events going on in the world today because my my clients are forbidden from talking about that. And I said, okay, well then your clients are forbidden to come on my show. <laughs> yeah. So like, okay, cool. Um, but no, it's it, you know, it's that's that's what it really comes down to. Is just you know, it's mental health and. Uh, and I preach that a lot on this show. And that's one of the things that I was kind of getting at earlier was, you know, suicide rates are through the roof this year. You know, people are, you know, again, there's a lot of people reinventing themselves, but a lot of people that are just sitting there, you know, in their Burka lounge are just, you know, not doing anything about it and just waiting for something to happen. So, you know, and those are the ones that are, you know, I worry about. Um, those are also the ones that listen to my show every day, so thank you. But at the same time, you know, I worry about them. Um, so, you know, that's the whole idea, you know, is to make them laugh, give them a safe space to come and listen to, know that other people share the same issues that they share, and if we can survive it, so can they. Totally. Yep. You're not alone. Not alone. Never, never alone. So speaking of not being alone, um, this is a fun conversation I like to have. So, Sid... In today's climate in the rock world, with the exception of a brief, very brief period in the 80s, the yeah. rock world has not seen a surge of female lead singers and female fronted bands in a long fucking time. Now you are coming into the world with the likes of Maria Brink from In This Moment or Tatiana from Ginger or... Lizzie Hale from Hailstorm, the Butcher Babies, so on and so forth. Constant, all these hard-headed, strong females that are really leading the charge in the music world. Um, what is it like to be a part of that movement right now? It's really great, um, and to be honest, it's not a new thing. Like uh, back in two thousand eleven. I remember doing a 48 hours festival in Vegas and um, Revolver magazine set up uh, like a meet and greet and it was just Maria Brink and myself and we we're signing calendars for Hottest Chicks in Hard Rock and I got a very 50-50 opinion on that like friends and family like oh we're so concerned like you're going down this path and they're you know turning you into this like sex object <laughs> like, you know? and I was just like but I'm in this calendar with Lizzie Hale and Amy Lee on the cover like you know so I was I felt Andy like it was great thank you <laughs> I, I was honored and I know who I am I know what I'm worth my value you know and mm -hmm. I didn't take that as an insult I was like so happy to be with all these amazing beautiful and talented women um so I mean 2011 god that was like so long ago it feels like kind of yesterday um but since then, uh, I just think that we're all working on our craft and just like evolving into like it, back then. I know a lot of them were a little bit older than me, and so like I was like just a kid, and now I feel like I'm turning into the woman that they showed me back then. 
So um, not that I'm like so much younger than them or anything. But, <laughs> uh, I love them. And so now I feel like we're kind of peers. Like after a certain age, you just stop like aging as a woman. You know, you just kind of like, I just am. <laughs> so um, yeah, it just, it's, I think it's a beautiful thing uh, that there's this community and somebody like Revolver Magazine has recognized it and they did, um, you know, like uh, Hottest Tweets in Hard Rock, which like I said was at first kind of like, oh, I don't know how I feel about that. Yeah. Um, and then they did like a tour with all the girls and um, the calendar and stuff. And they, I feel like they really celebrated the women that were doing something because there weren't that many of us, you know, yeah. and at least the ones that were making noise. So I felt proud and happy to be a part of that. Um, and I still am. Yeah. And, and you brought up a good point. You know, it was right around the end of the 2000s when it really kind of started to kick off, you know, with, you know, uh, Lizzie and Maria kind of starting to kick down the doors. And then all of a sudden some other things started to happen as well. And then it's now 10, 11, 12 years later and it's still going on and it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Mm -hmm. And I and I love it because, you know, you know, nine, I would say more than half of my my Amazon playlist is female led bands because of just how, you know, because they're just they're doing some of the best stuff I've ever heard. And yes. it's it's amazing to me because it's again, like I said, for a brief stint in the 80s in rock, you know, we had when you had Joan Jett and you had other stuff you know, like that. But then that kind of went away, you know, pretty quickly after, you know, with Blondie and everything like that. And then now it's came back, but then it's lasted longer and it's still getting bigger. You know, and it's yeah. still growing. And that's why I said what I said, because it's 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 not contained. It's still growing. And now, you know, you've got the likes of like Miley Cyrus, you know, noticing what's going on in the rock world. And she's wanting to jump ship and come over. I mean, hell, she's making a fucking Metallica cover album for Christ's sake, yeah. you know. And, you know, so now it's really starting to gain momentum. And it's it's so amazing. And I absolutely fucking love it. Um, yeah. Ever since I heard whore from Marie uh, from in this moment and I heard that song 500 times and really got the message behind it and you know taking you know back that word and you know turning it into something that's you know women honoring others rising eternally which I find amazing that she actually did that but it's like it's all this you know it's just it's magical because I have three daughters and I love knowing that in a world that's coming out today that women are accepted and women are equal and it's it's no more of that same misogynistic bullshit that used to be in rock. No. Yeah, I mean, it's there for sure. Yeah, I, I'll there. tell you, like, there are still people that are oh, like holding sure. on to the, we are men and we are oh, the sure. best. Correct. But, but thankfully, um, a lot of us have evolved as people and <laughs> know that we are equal. And, uh, and, you know, talent is talent. Like, I don't care if you're a a male singer or a female singer like if i like the voice i'll go crazy and be your biggest fan you know yeah because it is all about the voice and it's about the presence on stage you know there's a difference between being a, a lead singer and being a front man or a front woman you know what i'm saying there's a huge difference between those two and when you have that presence and when you bring you know regardless of you know male female or whatever you know gender identity you choose to have when you come up on stage and you just can bring the pain you know, people are just going to fall in love with it. And I, and I love that, you know, there's just so much good music out there today. And for anyone that says rock is dead, you know, it, it's might be on life support. Don't get me wrong. Cause the, <laughs> cause, cause the fans have kind of pushed it to the side, unfortunately for pop and rap and everything else, but it's coming back and it's coming back with a vengeance. You know, you don't see all the different, you know, all the different festivals that rock has in a year, you know, granted not this year or next year for that matter, um, that, you know, you don't see that with rock, with rap or pop or stuff like that. You may, you, there's a couple of festivals here and there, but on the rock side, we've got, you know, uh, well, it used to be rock on the range, you know, um, Houston open air, um, Detroit open air, you know, Carolina rebellion. You've got this one. We've got that one, you know, uh, aftershock, aftershock which is the only one that's been announced for next year. <laughs> so i mean we have that they don't and it's it's hard to believe that people are still saying that when we've got the world's loudest month and nobody else can claim that or yeah. when you go across the pond to you know germany or britain and see the amount of people that show up for download fest or go to you know germany for rock am ring two hundred thousand people pack those freaking streets yeah. you know we it, 
Nobody, no other genre of music can do that. It's a, it's a different story when you're talking about global. Yeah. Rock is still, you know, very strong globally. In America, it's not, but, you know, throughout the world, just like you said. It's Japan, it's just Europe, rising. South America, you know. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Rock and mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. I mean, Japan and Sweden and Germany, some of the best rock is coming out of there. I mean, some of the best metal is coming out of there. I mean, look at baby metal for crying out loud. I mean, that is one of the weirdest, you know, collaborations of musicians I've ever heard, but they fucking kill it. And they even collaborated this year with Bring Me to the Horizon. You know, that's, you know, it's pretty freaking rad. I mean, it's. uh, I I think it's getting stronger. You know, like you said, rock right now isn't like it used to be, but it's getting stronger and stronger. And females are a big part of it. You know, the next next wave. So, yeah. Excited about that. For sure. Um, a couple months. Oh, wait, hold on a second. I hit the wrong button. That's the downside of having a, a entire studio set up on my phone. I accidentally hit buttons every once in a while. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, one of the things that. So a couple weeks back, um, I had uh, another lead singer on um, by the name of Emily Lazar, the lead singer of September Morning. Um, I had her right. on, and we were talking about this exact same subject. Um, and. She blames not so much the fans, but obviously the record labels um, for that kind of support. Because one of the things that you see on in rap, particularly, is they will have a, you know, this crew of guys of 10 or 12 people that are all rappers as well. And they bring them up on stage and they try to, you know, get the extra pops for them. They let them, you know, have a stage for a couple of minutes. They'll do whatever they can to help help each other. But on the rock side of things, you know, there's not much of that going on anymore. You, you hear very little about, oh, so in, this big band is helping this little band out. You know, with the exception of maybe Five Finger Death Punch with um, Zoltan helping uh, Bad Wolves or there's a couple others. It's not as prevalent on the rock side. Do you yeah, agree with that? I've seen like Foo Fighters do that. And... Um and Jane's Addiction. So I think it really depends on which bands you're talking about. Some bands are more open to that and they pursue that and other bands don't. So I think it really depends. But yeah, it's probably not as prevalent as rap for sure because you see that across the whole genre. Yeah. I think uh, I I really do agree with that with having to do with the labels because um, back when I was signed to a major label, I won't say which one, I had an opportunity to collaborate with another rock band that we were touring with at the time. And I just had my single with Breaking Benjamin. It just came out, um, Blow Me Away, the remix. And so there was a lot of heat, you know, behind us at the time, like at that moment. Um, And so the label said, no, you can't collaborate with that band. They're not big enough. And Mm. I was like, but we're on the same tour. Like they're, um, we're like co- opening for the headliner you know and they're like yeah but they're not big enough but i was like okay so so i i've seen it myself where that could have been a cool thing that would have happened where we were going to put out um a single together do a music video and everything and it would be a cool way to promote both bands my female fronted band and their male fronted band (laughs) um you know but they wouldn't let us do it so sometimes with labels they don't see the value in collaborations and helping other bands out or seeing like what the benefit could be for their own artists they're just so like scared that anybody's going to compete with their artists so well and that's kind of a thing with rock bands in general right it's it is kind of more competitive uh, especially the landscape now with with let's say rap or electronic music there's so much to go around and it's so easy to get people up and up you know on and up uh, on and off of stage etc um you know whereas like oh are we going to bring this band in and compromise ourselves or whatever? Whereas like, if we think about the last time that rock was tr- like truly mainstream, let's say in the new metal days, right. With uh corn and Limp Bizkit, they, they were multi-platinum selling bands. They were on huge major labels. They were selling out arenas, you know what I mean? And all those bands were collaborating with each other's so all, you know, Fred Durst was a talent scout for whatever label he was, he yeah. was with. And, was getting bands signed all the time. I was like, oh yeah, these guys are good. And 
he was kind of afforded that same thing through Jonathan Davis because he was Correct. Jonathan Davis tattoo artist. So yep. it, it was all kind of this, oh yeah, well let's let's you know, let's all help each other. And now that I've been helped, I'm gonna bring it yeah. in. You know, he brought in Puddle of Mud and Stained and you know, you name it, all all, all these crazy things. So Correct. Uh, you know, it, it would be nice to get back to that. I, I would there's definitely a lot of rock bands I would love to do collaborations with and I miss that kind of element, you know what I mean? Yeah. But also, you know, hip hop artists and pop artists that want to come do some tracks from Chain Flower, we're we're down. You know what I mean? Like, if it's the right fit and, and if it's a it's, if it's a cool collaboration, and especially if it's something that can be beneficial to us, <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're we're out for it. We actually produced our own show where we invited um, two hip hop DJs and two rock bands, and we had a show in Silver Lake at the Los Globus. It was a great show. It was it was basically around a theme of female artists. And so it doesn't matter for us about the genre, you know, as long as we're supporting each other. And it was a great success. You know, these these girls are great, these hip hop artists. You know, what does it matter the the genre? As long as you're a musician supporting each other. So No we're, I, all for that. we're gonna keep pursuing that, you know, as soon as we get back outside. But yeah. you know, <laughs> you know when well, that's going to be hopefully soon. But yeah, soon. hopefully soon. All right, so I'm going to take a quick pause for a BetterHelp commercial, um, and we'll be right back. Tonight's episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. BetterHelp is an app that allows you to, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year, connect with your therapist to make sure that you're getting the best help possible. BetterHelp is different in the fact that you don't have to go to your Cigna or Blue Cross Blue Shield website, look through thousands and thousands of therapists in your area that may or may not be accepting new patients and then have to wait weeks upon weeks to get into that waiting room and then wait an hour or two to get to see that person in that waiting room only to find out that you don't connect on that personal level and they're not what you need. BetterHelp avoids all that. They connect you with a therapist And then you can choose right away whether or not you like them and decide whether or not you want to get a different one. BetterHelp is different because of that. And when you go to betterhelp.com forward slash SI pod, you get 10% off your first month. BetterHelp is the best therapy app out there today. There's nothing better. And I'm so grateful to be have connected with them because I use them. And says someone who speaks from a mental health perspective who has bipolar, it helps me every day. And I hope that they can help you as well. As a matter of fact, I know they can. So again, do yourself a favor. Go to betterhelp.com forward slash SIPod for 10% off your first month. Better help. You can't go wrong. Hey guys, have you ever wondered how you can help support the channel and look cool at the same time? Do yourself a favor, go to dckproductions.com forward slash shop and get yourself some of the coolest apparel out there. Whether you just want one of our basic logos in a t-shirt or hoodie form, or whether or not you want to get one of our great graphic tees that are just funny as hell. And also just released is our brand new line of mental health shirts, which help raise awareness and 25% also go to charity. So please do yourself a favor. Again, go to dckproductions.com forward slash shop for the best apparel out there. Thank you very, very much. All right, we're back. Um, Rain and I were just having a conversation about wrestling, which we will get to. Um, <laughs> but I do want to go into something that you brought up um, that I wasn't going to bring up because it is kind of... It's kind of in the history, but you brought it up, so I'll bring it up. Um, Because I'm curious about it. Um, The Breaking Benjamin collab. Blow me away. When, you know. Huh? You hated it. Is that what you're going to say? You're one of the. No. I loved it. it. I loved it. (laughs) But around that time, you know, that is when, when that all went down, the remix and all this other shit, that is when. Breaking Benjamin was almost broke up. I mean, the old band left, the new, and then Ben got the new people, and you know this whole kind of rigmarole kind of happened, and a lot of people were pissed. A lot of old fans were pissed because their 
old label put this thing out without their knowledge and you know um i can't remember the whole story but it's it's there's a lot to it what was it like for you being a part of that okay so um initially it was like so cool it was so amazing i remember being at rehearsal and my uh, A&R came over to me and said, I have some good news, and what is it? So, um, and the news was that I was gonna go into the studio, record with David Bendis, who is the producer of the original song, uh, Blow Me Away, and um, I wasn't actually in the studio with the band. Um, I didn't meet Ben, um, but I was told that Ben heard my record, which wasn't out yet at the time, um, and he loved my voice and he was like, okay, let's do it. Let's pick her. Cause they, they wanted to do a collaboration and they were going to release the greatest hits record. So I was chosen for that and we were label mates. So obviously that was the right choice, you know? Um, so I went in, I recorded it. Uh, they heard it, they approved it. Um, and it was released and there was an argument about who was paid what and all this stuff with the band, with Breaking Benjamin and nothing to do with me. Correct. Um, and it was, it wasn't that they didn't have any knowledge that it was going to get released. That was never it. Um, but there's a lot of like, there was know, a lot of fake stuff. Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah, there was, I mean, there, I was getting blamed personally for breaking up the band and I just cracked up at that. I thought that was so funny because I hadn't met any of them. And I was like, okay, if I had that much influence on this band. Like, <laughs> Uh, it was just some internal conflict that was already there. And this was the thing that pushed them over the edge. So, um, yeah, it was just like bandmates. Great like, job, like, Sid. I know. <laughs> I know. I'm not the Yoko Ono bringing Benjamin. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good analogy. The Yoko Ono of bringing Benjamin. Yeah. But, you know, that did cause a lot of uh, attention to the single at the time. So it was really it cool because it ended up um, getting to number five on the rock chart. Um, so that was really a cool <laughs> moment for me, other than, you know, the hate mail and the YouTubers and all that stuff. But I really got thick skin at that time. I was just like, it's okay. I know this is not my fault. And I think it sounds amazing. I'm proud of this. So it was a wild ride for that whole Breaking Benjamin thing. But, at a, you know, at a certain, like, after a certain amount of, like, bullying on the internet and stuff, I was just like, I don't care. I'm proud of this. And I, it should be. I still stand by that, you know? <laughs> Yeah, you absolutely should be. I mean, it was a great song. Um, I actually like the remix a little bit better than the original. I'll, I'll be truth be told, because I like, because I like the different harmonies and I like the different you know the melodies that go along with those types of songs. You know, yeah. the, the contrast of the of the male and female you know um, songs, or even you know different pitch you know male singers you know collaborating together like that i just like that the different types of harmonies that can be done that way and it just worked out really well you know when you're sitting there singing blow me away and he's screaming in the background it it just whew, it just hits you really hard so i, I want to compliment you on that but i just wanted to get your opinion it really on that blew you away. <laughs> it did blow me away look at that hit. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, but no, I just like I said, you brought it up, so I had to get you know your opinion on it. Yeah, I that's fine. <laughs> it's part of you know. I didn't know that. I just learned something today, so really? I love yeah. it. Yeah. No, I'm I'm yes. out of the loop, bro. <laughs> well, you know, to be honest with you, I mean, I've seen Breaking Benjamin twice. Um, once, God, back in 2005, 2006, when they were really kind of first breaking out. And then I saw him three years ago with a uh, five finger death punch. And so it was the old band and the new band. And yeah. I thought the, what they did two, three years ago was better than what they did in 2005. Um, because now they do like this 30 minute set of nothing but covers that each band member sings the song of that cover. So like Ben will actually fade into the background and let the person singing, take the reins. And it's a really cool thing that they have now. So, Whatever happened in the past I might be the for the best because it was one of the greatest shows I've ever seen. So, you you, you know you you might have Yoko Ono'd them, Yoko ono them, but it might be for the best. <laughs> well, you're welcome. There you go. There you go. Um, so, what is your guys' plans going forward? I mean, like I said, before, like we talked about before, the only thing that's announced for next year is aftershock. Um, Danny Wimber presents hasn't announced anything for obvious reasons. And the only thing that's out there is aftershock. Um, there's a shit ton of fucking, you know, European tours going on, 
but nothing <laughs> here in the States. So yeah. what are your guys, are you guys just playing it by ear? Are you guys, you know, going to try to go to Europe? Are you going to try to do this? Or what, what exactly are you guys doing? We're going to take all the opportunities that we have. You know, we have a few venues that want to book us immediately as soon as they open up. So that's great. Um, as far as festivals, to me, that's still, you know, to be determined because nobody really knows yeah. what's going to happen in six months, even though these lineups are starting to announce, who knows what's going to happen. Yeah. So we'll just have to wait and see. Yeah. Um, earlier on in the, uh, the conversation, um, you had mentioned that you had planned on releasing a bunch of singles and videos this year and you guys, nothing held you back. You guys still went with that. Um, but I did not hear in there that you were going to release an EP or an LP at all. Is that on the plans or are you guys just going to be a singles band? Cause, cause of the way the algorithms now work and it's all about, you know, you know, mixes and everything else like that. It's, it's all about playlists. So what exactly are you guys plans with that? We have a lot of opportunities right now. We're focusing on singles. So after we get five or six done, then, you know, maybe we will do an EP or an album. Yeah. We don't feel any pressure to do anything but singles right now. Yeah. Um, and then we can do remixes. Yeah, that's that's definitely something we're going to get into as well. Yeah, it's important so. to us to get the music out as soon as it's ready because we yeah. are, this is a new lineup and we want people to know what Chainflower sounds like, you know, because why are they going to buy our album if we have one or two songs out that are available? You know, maybe yeah. they just love it so much. I mean, I bought albums based on one song, <laughs> um, yeah. but you know, we just want them to be able to like look up Chainflower on any, you know, streaming platform that they use and just see a library of music that they could be really happy with. So um, that's the priority for us. It's just get the music out as it comes. Yeah. Well, and not only that, but I think, in the modern era, it's harder for people to digest an entire album. Whereas, hey, new band, one song, cool, no problem. I can listen to this song yes. right now. Like, blah, blah, blah. I don't have to go through and pick and choose. And it's actually quite similar to the Japanese model, which is they release six singles before they put the album out. Then the album has five or six other songs on it with the six singles and boom, there you go. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like, I, that's actually a really smart way to yeah. do things. Right? You've built these videos and then you have a handful of B-sides. You can even take B-sides from the singles, but that's another thing that kind of makes the singles cooler is some of those B-sides don't show up on the album. So you never, you yeah. kind of never know what you're going to get. So maybe uh, something uh, similar with Chain Flower uh, will, will happen. Down the road. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, these days albums are going to evolve into something different. Yeah. And that's what we're seeing because of the, the single, you know, boom. So what, you know, what our album is going to look like six months from now, eight months from now, I'm not sure. Yeah. But we'll have six or seven singles. Yeah, because you know? yeah, one of the things that I, you know, personally, you know, somebody who's, you know, almost 40 years old and, and has evolved with the times, used to be, you know, a musician as well and, you know, so on and so forth. One of the things that, you know, it, from my personal point of view, so I can't even imagine what these Gen Xers are thinking or Gen Zers or whatever they are, um, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, with... Uh, the way they're taking in music, but the only albums that I've listened to in the last maybe five years, cover to cover, are um, concept records. You know, from bands like, you know, Coheed and Cambria, or like I mentioned earlier, September Morning, or the one that Shine Down put down put out a couple years ago, or Ice Nine Kills, um, you know, Silver Scream album from two years ago. You know, stuff like that, stuff that has a theme cover to cover or is telling a story cover to cover but other than that if you're just putting together you know three or four singles and then a bunch of b-sides that you didn't really put effort into just to make a whole lp what's the point so i i definitely feel you on that yeah i don't think anybody is is at our level you know so concerned about records some bands are and that's great you know more power to them it's more the big brands that have to release records you know, like you said, Miley Cyrus, Paul McCartney, you know, Taylor Swift, et cetera, et cetera. They have to do albums. You know, we we are smaller, and so we're a little bit more flexible. We're going to take advantage of that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, even some of the bigger bands have come out recently. Um, one in particular with uh, Falling in Reverse. Ronnie Radke said straight up, Falling in Reverse will never release another full-length album. 
Um, you know, so, and, and that's kind of where, you know, this conversation I've had with many, many people about this year comes specifically from him and his quote um, that, you know, and he's stuck to that this year, they've only released singles. Um, and, you know, I'm kind of curious to see what happens with other bands like that as well. You know, some of the bigger ones, but as far as the, the smaller ones, absolutely make us good, make a good song, put every ounce of blood, sweat and tears into it and then put it out there and then people eat it up and then do it again and then do it again. You know, and that's like an old school thing that goes back to the fifties and sixties where the song was everything. You know, the one song drove everything and hopefully we're getting back to that where everybody's crafting and focusing on creating these amazing singles. And, and I wholeheartedly agree with you. That's that's where, you know, I think that's where a lot of people, you know, forget, you know, the single is what drives the album, what drives the band. I mean, you know, if you put out a great single, they're going to come back for more. Um, sure. Yeah, but if you put out a bad record, they might not come back for more. And you wasted 12 singles. Mm. Yep. Mm. Anyway. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> anyway, I mean, we're excited about the future for this band because, you know, we've just like hit our stride. We have two singles that we feel very strongly about and we have two more that are coming up and so on and so forth. So our thing is about the music, mm -hmm. you know, what format we're going to release it in. That's up to us. You know, and we'll get to that. But right now, every single is like so crafted. As far as, you know, not just the music, the visuals too. So we have both that we're really focusing on. And we're, you know, excited about the next one and the next one and the next one. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, you know, the next one's going to be better than the next and so on and so forth. I mean, the two singles that you have out right now just absolutely fucking rock. I mean, like I said, I've been listening to them. I've been listening to them a lot. I mean... Since I got, first got the uh, the message about you guys coming on the show, I was like, hell, you know. Um, I, I, at first, I was like, who the fuck? And then I went back and looked at you. I'm like, oh, okay, I know who these guys are. And, then, um, and uh, I was like, okay, I, yeah. Because um, <laughs> that happens sometimes. I'm like, wait a second, who? And then, yeah. Um, and I, I was like, hell yeah, yeah. let's do this. <laughs> um, so... Yeah, I mean, it's going to be an interesting coming year. And, you know, I wish you guys absolutely nothing but the best as far as that goes. I mean, you guys, you know, have something special. You know, you've got individually, you've got each got a name, but, you know, behind you that is, you know, recognizable. And, you know, you guys are kind of a quasi, you know, super group in a way. Um, you know, I hate that term, but you know what I mean. Um, you know, and uh, so you know, people are going to be curious and, you know, I know I was, and I, the first thing I heard, I mean, I was the first song I heard, I was like, Oh, wow. You know, was the one you released two weeks ago. What was that song? Huh? What was the first one you heard? Do you remember? The, the one that you released two weeks ago. I can't remember the name of it. Uh, <laughs> the one with the, the, the graphics video. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was, huh? She rides fire. She rides fire. Yes, 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 yes. Um, yeah, we, we recorded that over quarantine, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. well, I, I was afraid to call the studio and be like, <laughs> hey, can we like track some, like, are you like having people over? Like, <laughs> and yeah, we, we got, got it done. It, done. it, was, it was awesome. Yeah, it's it's just it's just good music. Um, and I also do like the, uh, the, uh, the live stream you guys did for... Um, uh, yeah. Yes. Dash. Yeah. Um, I watched that whole thing um, actually earlier today. That was really good, too. Um, you know, again, it's what I like about you guys is it's you guys keep it simple. There's three of y'all there, you know, a guitarist, a drummer and a singer. We can make a lot of noise with three motherfuckers. Exactly. <laughs> you know, and I like, you know, I like the just the guitar, you know, uh, drum combo. Um, there's been very, very few bands in, in, in time that has done that. You know, you got Local H and you got a couple other new ones that have come around now, but it's, it hasn't been as prevalent. So, uh, you know, because the timing that you guys have to be 
Because, I mean, you've got to be the rhythm and the lead. And then, you you know, Rainin, you've got to kind of play the bass and, you know, keep the rhythm at the same time. And it's 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 a great combination. And if plays- all these motherfuckers <laughs> on my back, man. I swear to God. Uh, you know how it is, man. We, you know, the drummers, we, we drive the bus. But it's, it's, it's fun to play with these guys a lot. I mean, it's the, the music is great. Uh, they're both so talented. It's really like, it's a blessing. I think we're all kind of the mutual admiration society. We all yeah. kind of feel the same about each other. We're all just stoked to play together. We're stoked to write together. And, um, you know, we've we've all been doing this together for a little over a year now like a year and a couple months so um yeah it's it's been a a long hard road so far but we're only we're only going upwards from here baby yeah i mean the that road is wide open for you guys and i think it's going to be badass and i cannot wait to see what you guys do next um i'm really 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 excited for it for it because you know i was like i said i was really happy and really excited to have you on and um i was you know because I, I mean, I, I, I know of you guys individually together right. as a collaboration. I, I, you know, like I said, when I first saw the name Chain Flowers, I was like, again, like most people are going to go like, who the hell is that? And then they go into it and actually, you know, see, oh, the oh, shit. OK. And then, you know, it's, you know, again, that that door is wide open. Um, and I think it's going to be pretty badass what you guys do in the, in the coming months, coming years. And, I, you know, again, I wish you nothing but the best because it's you guys have something special. Thank we you. thank you. We love being on your show. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> uh, you know I was glad again. I'm, I'm really glad to have you on. Um, so 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 Rainin, let's go ahead and um, let's go ahead and seclude. You know, fifty percent of my uh, my, yeah, my listeners for a second. The wrestling. Wrestling. <laughs> See, this is when most of my listeners drop off when I start getting to wrestling conversations. <laughs> yeah, perfect. You know, we do. So we you get, a- get the last bat in before you. <laughs> <laughs> exactly like, you know i wait at least until the end of the episode to, to talk about it therefore i don't you know lose that many <laughs> at least i listen yeah, yeah. Episode. um so okay so you had asked me on uh, during the commercial break if i watch nxt yes that is actually my primary show that i watch yeah i i think it's pretty much the best one out there as well uh, i want to give a shout out to a personal friend of mine carrying cross a uh, former nxt champion soon to be once again and um, like we were, we were kind of talking during the break, it's cool to see people start from one place and end up at another. And, you know, I've, I've been buddies with Cross for a little while now, not, you know, not the longest time, but before he was in NXT and it was cool to see him go from where he was then to where he is now. And to be somebody who gets treated with uh, like the respect and, uh, you know, like that gimmick and, and his character and, and, and kind of everything. Uh, you know, it, it doesn't get screwed up over there. It's it's good to see them doing the right things. With that, you know. Yeah, it, and it's, it won't get screwed up as long as he stays on NXT and doesn't go to the main roster. Yeah, exactly. But you know, that's that's another thing is he's one of those guys where it's like, all right, like him, Damian Priest, a couple others. Like you can see them going to WWE, and it's going to be hard for Vince to screw them up. Now, granted, we've said that about plenty of people. But it seems like, okay, those are the guys that at least Vince knows what to do with. You know what I mean? So well, I, I'm hopeful for all of them. Uh, but, yeah, either way, even if they stay on NXT, it's it's totally great. And, See, I would agree uh, with you. I, I would agree with you if he wasn't an impact first. Yeah, yeah. If well, he came I, straight from Ring of Honor or came straight from the indies, I would agree with you. But every yeah, impact but guy mean, that's ever been signed after they were with impact has been buried. I don't know, man. I don't know. Look at AJ Styles. He, he's at, the uh, exception yeah. to the rule because he <laughs> went off and he made a name for himself worldwide. And when he came out in Orlando five years ago at Royal Rumble, you know, people lost their fucking minds. So he, they, there was no way they could screw that up. But I, Killer Cross, Carrying Cross is is a uh, is a different situation. Well, we'll see. We'll see. I'll. I'll. We'll. We'll have to reconnect. When when uh when we get further down the road with that yeah but, see I, I'm more worried I'm about optimistic. I'm more I'm worried about my boy right now Keith Lee oh is that your homie yeah um him and I met one um a couple years back a couple years back God it's been about eight years now um at a um PWG show nice that's I that's where I first saw him wrestle uh it was PWG actually with. 
friend of ours, Adam Jones from Tool. He uh, he took me to my first PWG show. <laughs> that's <laughs> awesome. Yeah, and that's and awesome. Made, the amount of guys that were at that show that are now huge talents. I mean, it was you know uh, Keith Lee wrestled uh, the uh, what's his name? He was Jonah Rock, but now he's Bronson Reed. Okay. Um, I think it was uh, the Cage versus uh, who's the the mod guy from NXT UK, the the mod father. What's I can't remember his name. Oh, I can't. Uh, do it. Yeah. It, but but you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Right? The guy who looks like the fucking who. Um, then uh, you know Ricochet versus Walter. Yeah. Uh, the, the Chosen Bros, uh, Jeff Cobb and, and Matt Riddle versus the, the the Lucha Bros. Yeah. I mean, it was just a completely stacked card, and I would say almost everybody that was on that on that show then is signed to either AEW or WWE now. So it was, it's it's super cool to kind of see them before. And, and yeah, especially knowing Keith for eight years, I'm sure that was kind of when he was just starting to break into the business. Correct, yeah. Um, so yeah, man, that's... that's yeah, and it's the same thing with, he, um, you know, there. Tyler Black or Seth Rollins. I knew him back on the indie circuit. Um, yeah. You know, I, I used to, you know, way back when I first was breaking in, um, I met um, CM Punk at an ROH show. Um, and I got to work him one time at a Florida Impact Pro show in, in Florida. Um, wow. Daniel Bryan at the same time, you know, you know, but now it's like I did to see all these people that I get to I used to work with and they probably wouldn't remember me, you know, from a mile away. But, you know, um, it's cool to now be able to see, you know, like Ricochet, you know, I remember him when he was first coming up and stuff like that. Yeah. All these people, it, it's it's really, really cool to be able to turn on TV and see. I used to know him, you know, it, it's really cool. Success, baby. That's what it's all about. And yeah. it's going to be just a matter of time before you turn on TV and see Chain Flower and be like, there I used to know those guys. They used to, right. they used to go on my podcast. Wait, 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 wait. They stopped, they stopped answering my calls. <laughs> wait a second. I, I'm saying this, I've been saying this to every indie band that I've had on my show for the last two months. There will be no, I used to know those guys. Because <laughs> yeah. when... Because as I'm going to grow, you guys are going to grow. Because, you know, I'm sitting at 50,000 right now, you know, a day. So, you know, when I get to a million a day, I, I still want you guys to be a part of that as well. Because we were. He doesn't know anything. He's just a drummer. Bro, you know me. I always, I always got to play the heel, man. I always got to play the heel. Any chance I get. <laughs> no, but um, once you guys, you know. Do something else, you know. You guys are always welcome on the show. I cannot wait again. Cannot wait to see what you guys do next. And uh, I, I, again, I wish you guys absolutely nothing but the best. And um, we'll definitely be back on. And you and your daughters and your whole family are on the list for any chain flower shows yeah, playing your area, man. When you sure. when you guys come to D.C., Virginia, Maryland area, let me know and I'll be there. Hey, we definitely well, have to get to D.C. Yeah. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. I love to meet you guys as well. Um, especially you said, um, fuck you guys. Um, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, I'm just kidding. Um, but no, again, thank you very much guys for taking time out of your Friday night, um, to come here and chat. And again, I have nothing but love for you guys. And I cannot wait to see you guys do next. Thank you so thank much you. for having likewise, us. Bro. It, bro. Likewise. All right, man. Well, I'll talk to you guys again soon. And, uh, again, good luck. Thank you, Thank man. you. Thank Sweet. you. All right, have a good one. All right, guys. And that is our show for a Friday. Come back. Come back on Monday. Same time, same place. And we will do it again. But until then, stay happy, stay healthy, and as always, stay fucking heavy. We'll see you guys Monday. Peace.